Hey guys, I'm Kyle. And I'm Jean. And this is A Different Perspective. So in the previous episode, we talked about getting out of your comfort zone and just starting. And in this episode, we're gonna take it a little bit deeper and talk about practical application. We've all been there before, watching tutorial after tutorial, but not actually going out and doing the work and practicing what we're learning. Yeah, it's kind of like watching a sport that you love and you know the rules in and out, and it's easy to kind of criticize a player when they don't do well, but when you're actually in their shoes on the field, it's a lot more difficult. I personally get into the habit of watching a lot of tutorials or taking a lot of classes on a certain topic, thinking that I'm learning a lot. But until I go out and actually put the work in, I'm not really growing as a creator. Yeah, it takes time to get better and you have to put in a lot more work than you might think and that can be really discouraging. So how do we apply this? First and foremost, it's always practice. So here are some tips to help you get out and start practicing. When you're watching a tutorial or attending a class, be sure to take down notes. Next, go out with a specific goal in mind. It's okay if you don't achieve that goal at first, but at least give yourself some parameters to start with. When you're out shooting, don't be afraid to watch that tutorial again and remind yourself of the process. If it's an editing tutorial, it's better to follow along with them than just passively watching. Exactly, and it's all about the process of doing rather than getting it perfect. So upload it anyway and welcome any critical comments. And just remember that by failing, you are actually winning. And we mentioned that failure because we've both been in that place. For me, it was the first time that I tried to go out and take long exposure shots of waterfalls. I watched tutorial after tutorial, trying to learn how to get this down. Spent all day trying to get that perfect shot. Was so excited about it because I thought I had a couple good ones, but you know, got back in my car, recorded a video because I thought I was gonna do a little tutorial about it, and got back into Lightroom and saw that I didn't get any good shots. All of them were pretty much terrible, either overexposed or just not the right settings at all. And so I learned from that and took some notes on what I got wrong and went out, did it again and again, failed a couple more times, but eventually I got it. Yeah, for me, one of my biggest, most recent failures was I made this video that was called the strangest unboxing on YouTube. And basically it was me unboxing a new piece of gear I wanted to kind of portray an interesting story about, but it just turned out to be this really weird and unrelatable thing and the feedback I got was pretty obvious that people didn't like it because my failure was I didn't try to relate to anybody. I didn't try to create something for anyone else and it kind of backfired. <laughs> and for a while I took that video down because it was just so discouraging, but I decided to put it back up as a, a reminder for myself to just accept that and grow from it and then take that into my next project and improve on it. All that said, just remember that our failures are way bigger to us than they are to anyone else. So don't be afraid to share them. So Jean, you know what time it is? 1.34? No, it's photo challenge time. So last episode, I challenged us to a one point perspective photo. So Kyle, what you got? So for this first shot, I went to the Cumberland River Pedestrian Bridge located over in Two Rivers Park. It was something that I thought would be perfect during sunrise. And this is the shot that I ended up with. I had a couple different shots that I was choosing between. This was one of the first ones at a lower angle. This was practically the same shot, just shot vertical instead of horizontal. And then from the other side of the bridge, this was one that I was almost gonna go with. We ended up going with this as our final shot. So this is what I started with. I purposely underexposed the bridge here because I, I didn't want the sun to be so blown out that it would be hard to bring this part of the sky back in. So the reason I did that was because I knew that without destroying the quality of the photo, I could bring back the shadows and still retain a lot of the detail. 
So that's what I ended up doing. And that's what really helped me in this final edit was bringing back those shadows and pulling down the highlights a lot here so I could still retain you can obviously tell it's the sun. I'm still getting those sun rays as well, but I pulled back a lot of the sky by doing that. So this is a little too overblown. So that was one of the main things that I did. Another thing for this edit was because we started off with it being basically severely underexposed here for the bridge, I knew that I had to boost that exposure. So I did that by uh, 1.25 here and I wanted this to be a moodier very contrasty photo so I boosted the contrast there and again because I knew that I un underexposed the bridge I had to bring the shadows up left the whites where they were and brought down the blacks quite a bit added some texture and a little bit of clarity just to highlight the detail of the bridge those textures and also of the rails here a little bit of the trees too and drop some dehaze in there too i just added a slight s curve in there and for the saturation i turned up red a little bit lowered the orange a little bit and the yellows and then with green aqua and blue i toned those down so i could get a calmer just desaturated look with the sky didn't really play around too much with the luminance i just wanted to back off some of the color within the sun and on these railings and then with sharpening i was only really concerned about highlighting and sharpening the railings and the bridge the parts of the trees so if you look this is basically I wanted to mask this a lot. So I wasn't getting a lot of the clouds or anything like that. So I brought that mask all the way up to hundred. And then basically the only other thing I did to this photo was I pulled in a little bit of vignetting. Just draw your eyes a little bit more into the center of the frame. Okay, so for my picture, I had a very vague idea of what I wanted. Um, I had an idea that I could get a really long road as one point perspective. And in Los Angeles, there's quite a few of those, but I didn't have a lot of time to go drive to one because there weren't really a lot of those in the area I live. I did get a chance to visit a friend down in Koreatown and uh, I saw this next to their place where this is Wilshire Boulevard and I could walk back this way and stand on the sidewalk here and look down the road this way and get a really cool shot. And that sounded great and everything. And we'd walk down there and it was a really cool experience. But unfortunately, there were a bunch of trees here in this middle section um, right here that don't show up on Google Earth. And I should have used Street View, but I didn't. And um, it just kind of obscured everything. So I did try to get a couple shots here. Um, this is that corner looking down there. You can see the trees are in the way and there's that cool building. Uh, and I got a long exposure of the bus and it was okay, but it doesn't really scream one point perspective. Um, and then I ended up turning around and looking behind me straight towards downtown. This was really cool. I got like a helicopter up here. It's funny how when you show up to a location and you start looking around, just things present themselves. I still didn't end up going with this shot. I just didn't feel like the leading lines were quite strong enough. So we were walking back. I was feeling a little bit discouraged. Um, and then I decided let's just shoot the cool building and see what I can do with an upshot. Um, this one was pretty cool. It's definitely one point perspective V, but it wasn't incredibly strong. Um, this one was definitely more right down the middle kind of a vibe, but not perfect, um, but it wasn't interesting enough for me. And then uh, I kind of, walked over to the corner of the building and looked straight up and put my camera right, right next to it. And this is the shot that ended up uh, being the winner for me. And it's pretty cool, but it's not, it's not perfect, especially since I didn't really have time to plan things out super well, but it is pretty neat, I think. And for the first photo challenge, it's not horrible. It's definitely a bit grainy. I had quite a bit of ISO cranked on this. I had my aperture closed down so tight so that I could eliminate some of the depth blur here and uh, had to crank the ISO because of that. But it's pretty awesome, I think. And 
that is my submission for this week. As far as the editing goes, I just switched from Adobe Standard Color to Adobe Landscape. In the light, I really didn't do a whole lot, except I really wanted to be able to expose the building and the sky at the same time. So I really pulled down the highlights and brought up the shadows and it boosted the whites just a little bit um, to bring full contrast into the image. And then one thing I did as well is I did a gamma bump in the curves here, just took the middle point and kind of bumped it up. And that really helped just kind of bring the whole thing uh, a little more to life and kind of brighten everything up nicely. In the color tab, I didn't do a ton of work. You can see I made the sky a little bit darker and I took the oranges of the building and kind of brought those up a little bit and the reds, obviously just to jump, adjusted the temperature a little bit and added a lot of vibrance and saturation, even though it doesn't really look highly saturated in the image, that's kind of what it required to pull all the color out of this photo. In the effects, I just added a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity to just make it pop out a little bit better, and a tiny, tiny vignette that you can barely notice. And when I do AB, you can check that. I also did a little bit of split toning. I added a slight bit of blue into the highlights and just a little bit of red into the shadows just to kind of enhance what's already here. For detail, I upped my sharpening from the default on my A7 III of 40% to 50 and I added just a little bit of masking so that I could remove some of the extra noise in the flat areas. Other than that, I just removed chromatic aberration and lens distortions and that's basically it. Uh, I don't think I cropped it, nope. That's just the straight up image right there. And you can see the before and the after. So kind of an insane difference of what I was able to pull out of this raw image, but that is how I did it. This episode, it was my turn to pick out the challenge. So my challenge is long exposure photography. Okay, nice. There are a variety of different ways that you can take long exposure photography, but it's basically the process of leaving the shutter open for an extended amount of time to capture light or motion through your frame. And I'll leave this open for interpretation so we'll see how different the results turn out. So if you would like to join us for this photography challenge, use the hashtag a different perspective TV on Instagram. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get involved in all our future photography challenges. Thanks for watching. I'm addicted to looking at myself on the Atomos. <laughs> it's kind of a problem. So how do we launch a rocket into space? John, you know what time it is? 1.33? No. some locations for emergencies. Would you like to call 133R Emergency Services? <laughs> what? No. Okay, I won't do it. <laughs> what the heck? Whoa, that was weird. 133? For emergencies? <laughs>